Well, it gives me great pleasure today to introduce to you a lady who I not only consider a great friend and a great mentor, she has been a colleague of mine for several years, but her passion and her knowledge of the subject of shamanism, which I'm very close to in my heart, her knowledge and experience is second to none. And she is the only one person I would consider talking to about this. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you a fellow colleague and course organizer of the Arthur Finley College, a wonderful person <laughs> and a great inspiration and an independent um, teacher in her own right for decades. And what she doesn't know about what I'm interested in isn't worth knowing. So welcome, Maureen Mernon. Thank you very much, Helen. It's really wonderful to have you here. And as you know, I'm a great explorer and um, I have enjoyed over the years so much our conversations. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm going to embarrass you when you when I say this, and I remember saying it in front of you a while ago, but I always felt that when we were working together, there was something from that time together. I felt I always came away a better person. Yeah, lovely. And I do believe that is the shamanism and how it is in your life, how you live it. It's like anything, isn't it? Any philosophy, it's not what you know, it's how you live it. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. And so I'd love to ask you, Maureen, if you could, for everyone, explain what shamanism is. Well, for a start, shamanism is as old as mankind itself. I mean, the evidence that they found going back in history, in old caves and things like that, that proves that they were working on that basis of shamanism way back, way, way, way back when mankind was you know, first standing upright. Um, but it's also the oldest spiritual practice. Yes. It's not confined to any one country or any one culture. It's actually global. It's everywhere in the world. Also, it's not gender-ridden, so um, shamans are male and female. There's no age limits. There's uh, what you believe, you know, otherwise uh, outside of shamanism has no impact on it whatsoever. Really, it's, it's like, the, the, like the principles of shamanism say, it's about finding your authenticity. That's and to me, that's very important because a lot of things that we, we get interested in a lot of other subjects, we read an awful lot of knowledge about it and do courses and research. But at the end of the day, if we only follow one way because one person tells us, then all we've done is we've changed crutches. We've moved from one crutch to another crutch and we're just using someone else's. Now, yeah. if we use that knowledge as an inspiration to make us look at our lives and how are we connected with all that is, because as, as you know, I've been a medium for many, many years, and yes. it's always important to me the communication we have with the unseen world. Yeah. But I'm also very, very passionate about what about the spirits of the living world, you know? Absolutely. You know, we live in a spiritual world. And so why, if we are only paying attention to the invisible, in fact, if we are saying that we can only contact the invisible, then we're missing out this earthly journey, this part of us that is incarnated here onto this earth to live this life, to interact with this life and all other things that's connected with it, whether it's animal, plant, mineral, elements, whatever. We're a part of it. We are nature. Yeah, absolutely. That, I mean, it's such an important thing, isn't it? And uh, I, I know, like you say, there is, you know, more than one way, of course. There isn't just one way. But, yeah, we can't neglect the, the living spirit at all, can we? Absolutely not. And if we, if we do what the old people did, if we go back to our tribal elders and ancestors, 
Um, and we look at how they interacted with nature and the animal kingdom um, and how they learned such a lot, uh, uh, you know, from watching, from observing, following nature and the natural laws. You can't get outside of the natural law, you know? Yeah. I know mankind tries to interfere with it and to bend it to fit um, you know, our own will, but it's yeah. never going to happen. Nature yeah. is nature. That, that's what it's about. It's a natural flow of, of uh, a process of living. Yes. And you can change that. That's in the hands of God. Definitely, definitely. And how did you get interested to learn more about shamanism? Well, I've actually been very drawn to shamanism for oh, quite a lot of years before I even really became active into it. And I think what helped a lot was I had a lot of interaction um, with Native American um, uh, people, um, wow. especially the Lakota. I, I, for about 12 years, I was visiting the Lakota each year to stay on the reservations with them and take yeah. people, you know, to learn from the, the real people, not yes. just from the books. The ones who yeah. lived it. Absolutely. But also with the Cherokee, and I've been on many, many other reservations. I love their simplicity of life. That's yeah. what I love the most, is their simplicity. The way they see the world. Um, and, and that kind of got me more and more interactive back again with shamanism looking first of all at Celtic shamanism, because that's a part of our heritage. And I'm always very interested in that. Um, but I, I did read a lot of books on contemporary shamanism, and I'll be very honest with you. I just Every time I read a book about it, I used to think, no, no, that's not for me. Yeah. Because it kind of goes whoosh, right over your head. Yes. And so many of them talk about you becoming a shaman, making you a shaman. Oh, yeah. And, you know, that can't happen. Yeah. Um, you, you can't pronounce yourself to be a shaman. You can't take a course or read a book and become a shaman. It's your birthright. You are either born that way or you inherit it from a, a, a mother or a father or maybe creator or the people will choose you, will see that something that you have that's that little bit extended beyond the normal range um, of knowing, because that's yeah, what yeah. shaman means, one who knows. That's wonderful. Actually, Maureen, that's really interesting because that was the very first thing I learned about shamanism. And my knowledge and experience isn't that extensive. It's just passionate and I know a little bit. Um, but... That was the very first point I learned was you would a shaman would never call themselves a shaman. Never, they never do. No. To try they right. don't need to. Exactly, yeah. they don't need to. Yeah. It's not a self recognition. Mm. It's a, a people or a culture or a tribal recognition that people see something else. Yes, you know what I mean. And the simple way of looking at things. I once walked um, in a field very similar to the one at the side of the college where the horses are. Yeah, shaman. yeah, and um, we just walked and we were talking and commenting about the day and he suddenly stopped and we were literally up to our knees in weeds <laughs> what we perceive as weeds and he did say to me he says tell me he said what do you see here and I just looked around and I said I see a pharmacy and he said that's the difference he says some people see weeds others see medicine Yes, absolutely. Because That's most of what we, we consider to be weeds are actually used in medicines and have been, you know, for a long, long yes. time. But shamanism, like Native American culture, is that there's a great deal of respect and gratitude that goes with the practice. Yes. You know, you don't just say, oh, I'll, I need some fungi or I need some berries or roots. Or, you don't just go and take them. Yes. The shaman would spend a considerable amount of time communicating with the spirit of that plant or tree or berry or fungi yeah. or whatever was needed. And they would spend days asking permission. Would that 
would the energy of that spirit be happy to work with the shaman and produce something that would be healing for their their client or their patient wow uh, and that's how it's done it's not just taken because it's there yeah you know? actually that's very interesting when i was working in australia there was a lady um who was aboriginal and she mm-hmm. was part of the group and one of the group wasn't feeling very well and she said tomorrow i'll go into the forest and and you know mm-hmm. tell you our remedy and so she went and she collected the flowers mm-hmm. and she gave this remedy which did actually help um not the time advocating everyone goes out and starts Absolutely. rummaging through the forest. Yeah, they yeah. need to know what they're doing. But this was information passed down through her tribe yes. for yeah. centuries. And then what was interesting was at the end of the day, she said, uh, we said, oh, we'll see you tomorrow. She said, yes, I've um, I've just got to nip back to the forest because I've got a little bit more work to do to say thank you. Absolutely. And I thought that was so beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. I say to all my students, Helen, if you go into the woods, uh, to the forest, and you want something, or you're walking by the seashore or in the meadows, and you see something, whether it just be a stone or a stick or a feather, don't presume that it's yours for the taking. Absolutely. If it belongs to anyone, it belongs to Mother Earth. And if I saw something in your kitchen which I love your gone potty. <laughs> when I see something, I wouldn't just walk in there and think, I like that, I'll take that, because Helen's left it there on the workshop, that's it's free to take. You know, you wouldn't do it. So no. let's treat nature in exactly the same way. I love the book you recommended to me of uh, Tamaric Song, because he talks about, you know, this intrinsic um, connection we have as nature, yes. not just looking at nature, but being a part of nature. Yes, you know? yes. Uh, and I can totally, totally agree with that. That we need to start showing respect and gratitude, and we need to, you mm. know, listen and watch and uh, feel what the animal world are trying to teach us. Yes. You know? And then we're finding, aren't we, so much more. Now it's in the news all the time that we're seeing the effects of not having been in tune and respectful of nature. And and now, you know, we're we're seeing all the... We're paying the price. ...climate problems and everything. Absolutely. But what I like to emphasise on, particularly on my work at the college with shamanism, is that... This course, and I am not there to teach anyone to be a shaman. No. I do not claim any titles. I don't particularly want any titles. What I want to encourage is that every person born on this earth, we have the seed of shamanism within our DNA. Yeah. As Tamaric Song says, we it says it's as natural to our nature as the robin knowing how to sing or build a nest as, you know, animals knowing how to hibernate when it's time to hibernate, as a wolf knowing how to howl. It's within us. We've just forgotten that it's there. Yes, absolutely. I so agree with you, Maureen. And so you're offering the courses at the college, which Mm -hmm. is brilliant. I'm so pleased because... It is a spiritual college, Mm -hmm. and even though it is a spiritualist tradition there, you cannot ignore the spiritual. And this is the most natural, known spiritual practices and knowledge and wisdom and experiences. Absolutely. So it has an amazing place there. And um, you're offering courses there this year? Absolutely, yeah. We've got um, we've got two courses on shamanics, which is the one I'm doing in uh, next month, this, this March, and then this one in September. That's going to be more connected with how animals work with us. Oh, beautiful! Yeah, close to my heart, that yeah. absolutely. But even on the um, you know the the healing one, the um, uh, the, the celebration of the you know the healing yes. uh, spirit week that we're doing, there's going to be an aspect of shamanism in that. Yeah, um, like I did when we did it together, because you can't divide the two, you know, you cannot separate them. You can't, people, you know, people need to understand sometimes the greatest healing that can be done 
is not necessarily on a physical level. Yes. You know, it, it, there's so many other levels of us that also need healing, that need to be balanced. Yes, I, I mean, definitely. The whole, the holistic aspect is huge, isn't it? Mind, body, soul, spirit. Absolutely. We can't ignore one without the other being affected. No, absolutely. Yeah. And I worry that sometimes we get too engrossed in the spiritual, the invisible spiritual self. That yes, yes, we know about soul. Yes, we know that life is eternal. We know we know we've got communication with the other world. But the soul benefits so much more by understanding the life we're living and our connection with all other aspects, all other levels of this life. Our life is no more important to God than an ant. <laughs> Everything has its job to do, you know. God didn't just make ants or insects or things that we might be scared of a little bit because he had nothing to do that day and... That, you know, thought, oh, well, I'll just make a few extra animals, you know. Um, it, it doesn't work like that. It, it, we've, we're part of a picture. Yes. We're like a, bro a brush stroke on a canvas. And the picture isn't complete without us, isn't it? Isn't complete with every single life force that has been created. Yeah. And we yeah. need to rejoin our original group. If we yeah. have any chance of finding our authenticity. And if anyone in shamanism tells you you should follow it this way or that way, then personally, I turn around and I walk in the Yes, way. definitely, definitely. There yeah. are no rules. There are no dogmas. It is you finding how you fit in. We know through spiritualism, we're individual and unique beings. In yes. all this world, like, we're like snowflakes. There's no one else like us. Yeah. Our interaction with the rest of nature is very important. We need to find our slot. Where do I fit into all of this? So that I am the extra cog in the big wheel of life that's turning. And I cause no disturbance or unbalance. And I learn how to flow and get the most out of the journey I decided to make. Yes, it's wonderful, isn't it? It really is. And, and you know, I, it, it resonates with all of us, you know. Yeah. It, it's also very inspiring when you put it like that as well, to think that we do all have a place. We are a little cog in yeah. the big wheel of things. Uh, Absolutely. You know, and, and, and that everything is, you know, connected with yeah. that. You know, I remember like years that. ago, you know, reading that little book of um, St. Teresa, the little Carmelite nun. Yes. And uh, in it, she writes about us all being flowers in the garden of God. And some of us, yes, will be the beautiful, fragrant roses. Some of us will be the exotic, exotic our orchids or lilies. Some of us will have immense, physical beauty, uh, intelligence, but in all of the creation of this perfect, perfect garden, if we looked at the picture from a distance, it would not be complete without the tiny little white daisy on the lawn. Absolutely. And some of us have to be that daisy on the lawn. Yeah. And what more can you get about strength and courage and determination than from that tiny little white flower? We can walk on it and crush it. We can cut its head off with a lawnmower. And the day after, you go out there and it's there in all its <laughs> glory, standing full face up to the sun where it's returned, you know, as if to say, you can't destroy me that easily. <laughs> we would benefit, wouldn't we, in life if we could do the same? Absolutely, absolutely. And and I think people are looking more and more for that, for finding where they yeah. fit in and, you know, being that daisy. I think it's absolutely. such an important yeah. analogy that by being the daisy that gets mm. cut and comes back and smiles at the sun every day, every we day. are we are part of the completeness of the universe. So yeah. uh, I have found through my shamanic practicing of for my personal level that when something now turns up in my life, like I am going through at the moment with my husband's health, yeah. is to sit down for a moment and ask, okay, you know, I didn't invite this knowingly. So what have you come to teach me? What are yeah. you trying to teach me? And believe me, I'm learning a lot about myself. Yes. Through, through a lot of tribulations that have happened 
um, since October, since I lost my sister. Yeah. And I've, I've learned a lot about myself. And yes. that is what all of this is about. Isn't it? Isn't it just? And I, I totally relate, having lost a brother uh, mm -hmm. just a year ago, yesterday he passed. Mm -hmm. And like you, we have been working with the spirit world and that. Mm -hmm. I didn't want a medium to say that they, they had his presence there. I was angry that he wasn't here. So and, and so I think what's important is how we've learned about ourselves and how we teach and how, how other people are, how unique this is to all of us, how we respond and what we yeah. learn from it and how we can grow from it. That's why I think, you know, that shamanism goes so hand in hand yeah. with spiritualism. Because in yes. spiritualism, we talk about the uniqueness and responsibilities of the soul and, and why we, uh, what feeds the soul. And shamanism says exactly the same thing, really. Yes. You know, it's, we, we look after the personal space. We've entered this in our personal space. And we're, we're made of stardust. We're, we're made of the same atoms, molecules and construction that the stars and planets and moons are made of everything we consider awesome and wonderful yeah it's a part of us yeah and we have to see that you yeah. know we have to be able to see that and that is why i i like to keep things simple you know yeah. um I, I say you there is no right and there is no wrong and you change as you grow i mean there mm -hmm. are things that will come in shamanism that who might test you and make you think, no, that's not for me. That's okay. That's yeah. perfectly okay to say, no, that part's not for me. Not yet. Just put it to one side. As you grow and you learn and you develop more of your understanding, there comes a time when that that you put away doesn't seem quite so remote. It doesn't seem that distant from your thinking. And you think, think of a minute, I could take that back out. I might change it and alter it it my way yeah. but I can understand it now I can understand it better you know no oh, definitely well actually Maureen that makes me well that reminds me of something you did for myself and Jackie uh, a little while ago that I found very profound and very very helpful and so did Jackie whereas we had a medicine wheel reading mm -hmm. for you yeah, and it was absolutely wonderful, and I wondered if you could explain to to people who don't know what a medicine yeah. wheel is, you know, about it. Well, the medicine wheel, of course, is very, very old. It's very ancient, especially to the North American Indian tribes. But I'm sure that there are variations used in a lot of different cultures because yeah. if you look at the teachings and the ways of a lot of various cultures, there's a similarity. There's a thread runs through it. Even within our Celtic shamanism, we were doing exactly the same things in this country, in Ireland, Wales, Europe, at the same time that the Native Americans were doing the same ceremonies in their lands. You know, so it's kind of like maybe ancient peoples followed the flow a little bit more. Now, I visited um, the big medicine wheel up in the Big Horn Mountains once when I was up in, um, in uh, America. And I remember walking around. They've had to put a, a wooden fence around it now because mm. people were taking the stones. You know? Oh, yes. Has to so be protected. Put, so, but I, I walked, and it's huge, and I walked around the whole circumference of it with a stone in my hand, thinking I must throw this into the circle, but I don't know where it needs to go. So I walked around it. And then I walked around it again and then suddenly I stopped as if something rooted me to the place. I thought, this is the place. So I turned and I threw my stone. And believe me, I am the worst thrower in the world. And it landed right in the centre of the centre term that was there. But as I did it, I felt a wind go through my back, right through my back and out to where I'd thrown the stone. Wow. So I said to my husband, I said, I'm not moving from this spot. I said, just get my compass out of my bag. I said, and tell me what direction am I standing in? And when he, he looked at it, he said, you're in the West. And I said, no, 
that is strange. I told him what I felt, this wind go through me. I was born in the West. Ah. I was born in the autumn, so I came into this life on that west wind. I came in with it. And it was, it was almost like it was recognising me again as one of my own. And ah. I just thought, I feel I'm connected to the medicine wheel. Yes. And I can use it in my own way for my own journeys. Yes. And then other people got interested in it. So, of course, I started to design one that I could use at places like the college or yeah. to do someone a reading if they wanted one. And, and what it is, it's a map of guidance. Yes. It's fortune telling. It's not prediction. It's not telling you what you have to do. It's a guidance map that's giving you options or pointing out what options we have. Yes. Okay. And uh, the, I've got the basic one that I use with students, which is 65 teachers, as you know, because you've had that. But my own has grown with me to expand, and that's the beauty of it. My own has about 130 teachers on it. Wow, goodness. Because yeah. in the centre, when you get to that left centre, where it finishes at 65, yeah. you can then add another eight circles and push it out further. So I put another eight and I've got trees. I've got what I call my earth teachers and they're all trees. And I've got mineral teachers. I've put crystals in there. Then I push them over it, but I put plant teachers in there. It's so beautiful. it's growing and growing. And then there's no end to it. You know, it, yeah. it's endless. It's as much as you want it to be. And, and a circle, it, it's the right thing. It's circle is a no beginning, no ending. Yeah. And all the other cycles of life. And and I remember you sent us the template, which we printed off ready to fill in as we went through with everything. But it seems to encompass so much. But the the upshot of it um, is how you feel, isn't it? And in Mm. front of us, Mm -hmm. we had all these potentials and understandings right. mm-hmm. that you then have the the possibility to explore. And it really mm-hmm. seemed to make a lot of sense. And looking back now, since doing that medicine wheel, mm-hmm. it has been an incredibly positive experience where yeah. you can make sense of what's happening with all these yeah. potentials and yeah. make decisions. I found it very empowering. The the beauty of it is, what I like most about it is, we, for the first time maybe, we trust the soul power to choose the right numbers because it's nothing to do with me. I don't choose the numbers. The sitter chooses the numbers. It works with numerology as well. Absolutely, Well, absolutely, because I brought this out to show you because Judith Seaman uh, was very interesting. So she gave me the numerology equivalent. So say, for instance, you drew, um, I don't know if you did draw anything. In, I know you did it a lot in the northeast, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> that, you had a lot of teachers in the So let's for instance, you chose teacher number... Um, I remember having Grandmother Spider. <laughs> grandmother Spider, absolutely. And for instance, well, let's take Grandmother Spider because... Um, and um, she came into it because of she's I mean, it's the dream weaver's corner. That's how I've labeled it the dream weaver's corner. And she weaves her web just as we have an opportunity to weave our dreams. But let's say for instance, you t- you chose um motivational teacher number 31. Now 31, which comes under DMB. Now the an addition to that from numerology is it brings a uh, focus on your work, uh, building uh, structures for the future, being practical and orderly and using good management. Building uh, builds greater focus on business matters, uh, strengthens planning potential and efficiency, also increases responsibilities and organization, a need for a practical point of view and idealistic approach. Uh, venture may relate to a long stem dream, so it's how to put, on, which is perfect for the dream weaver's corner. Yeah, right. yeah. Supports lowered energy and attention to matters of health. Yes, which, um, yeah, I've had to do for a long time. Yeah. yeah. However, may cloud emotions. 
okay? Right. Brings inspiration and intuition. Listen to the small voice within. It influences the imagination and the intuition. Exactly. That was just through the numerology part that Judith yeah. has um, extended towards the medicine wheel, uh, which I've also now started to use as well. Yeah. I use the eight directions. We've got the four cardinal directions of north, south, east, and west. And to me, they are the natural flow from the four mm -hmm. grandfathers or the four winds, the four directions of the universe. But I like this, I call them sub-directions as well, so that we've got eight. Because to me, the sub-directions, you know, like uh, the northeast, the southeast, the um, uh, northwest and the uh, southwest, uh, uh, northeast, is something, is they are, to me, they're like bridges. Yes. If you imagine that the four directions are like the four big rivers that run through your life. Yes. And they also contain the elements of air, earth, fire and water, which yeah. we are made up of. Yeah. So if you imagine a river, to, to get across a river, we need a bridge that spans from one banking to the other banking to get us safely across the river. And those sub-directions are the bridges that will link one pathway to another yeah. to get and also allow you to traverse back to pick up more teachings from the, the numbers of teachers. Ah, yeah, yeah, you need to go back to somewhere to learn. Go back them, yeah. to, to a teacher and go back to a place on the medicine wheel where you need to be, for instance, for you, you, you could spend a lot of time in that um, northeast direction with each teacher and each time reach a different level. It's just limitless, really, isn't it? Absolutely limitless. And then you would have the addition of the numerology of all the numbers you've chosen. Wow. Which is an extra bonus, if you like, an extra card to play with. And all these are already there. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm not giving anything. All I'm doing is explaining the numbers you chose. Yeah. And how I understood and interpreted those numbers. And those are the tools that can help you to make better decisions. Yeah. That's what it's all about. It provides yeah. a route map, doesn't it? Almost like a compass. It yeah. is the wheel. It is the compass of life of the it universe. Is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and everything we do moves in circles, doesn't it? Even the seasons, everything of the earth, you know, because everything has a cycle. No. Definitely, definitely. And, uh, we can, and this is how the old people, the ancient ones, learned. They yes. understood life through nature. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think the more tools that we have available to us, it's like I'm very into runes as well. I love the runes, especially the Elder Pobok. Uh, and But they're also just guidelines, the signposts. Yes. Follow. You know, nature knows how to follow signposts. We have just forgotten. Yeah. You know? Getting back in touch with it. Uh, and shamanic studies, not becoming a shaman, but discovering the seed of shamanism within yourself and where you fit into this great, grand, beautiful picture of life, helping you to ch make ch wise choices and not to, not to sort of um, suffocate yourself if you make a wrong choice, but just... Mm -hmm. Okay, but on hindsight, and hindsight's a wonderful thing, may not have been a good decision. Mm -hmm. But okay, I've learned something from that. I've learned something, and it yeah. means that if I hit that marker on my pathway again in another way, I will make better choices this time. Yes, because we've learned so much along the journey. And that's the only way we do learn, isn't it? Yeah. You know? Oh, I mean, definitely. You know, uh, 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 there's so much about shamanism that sits so well within me, you know, with shadow work, with the soul that people are so afraid of. And um, and yeah, it's a part of who we are. You know, <laughs> we learn so much from the worst times in our lives. And that's how we remember that. Yeah. From the good times. Yes. Definitely. Oh, Maureen, it's been amazing to talk to you and hear your your wisdom. And um, I'm going to ask you if you could, um, if anybody who's watching this would love to know more and have a, a medicine wheel reading, learn more about mm -hmm. shamanism, 
where they can find your courses? Where where would be the best place? And we'll put well, a, a link obviously, in the description. Obviously, look on to the um, um, college website. But also, if they join on Facebook, on Facebook, I run a page called Back to Basic Shamanism. Back to Basic Shamanism. And they it's can contact great. me through there, you know, message me through that um, if they want to know more. Um, and... Um, and, and read some of these articles upon because anything I find interesting, yeah, I put it on there. Yes, I'm a member of the group and it, it, it's wonderful. You know, there's so much information. Well, I always think if I find something that I find interesting, maybe someone else will find it interesting, but not know how to discover it. Yeah. For me, that's what it's about. It's sharing of knowledge. I just don't get people who are afraid to share what they know. Yeah. Uh, because knowledge can only grow. It's like planting the field, isn't it? Yeah. It will only grow if you throw the knowledge out there. And, and who does it belong to in the first place anyway? All of us who are teachers learn it from somewhere else. Our teachers learned it from somewhere else and so on and so on. It's a never-ending mm -hmm. flow of information. And all we do is we add to it yeah. with our own understanding and interpretation of yeah. what we've discovered upon the journey. Someone else will add some more to it. Yeah. That's the beauty yeah. of growth. It is, isn't it? And it is all about that growth. Absolutely. Maureen, it's been amazing to see you again, to talk to you again and to hear your passion and your love for what is the most natural, global, universal spirituality. And, and thank you so much for sharing this with us today and giving your time. I know You're welcome. Well. <laughs> You're welcome. I, I would just want to want to everyone to, uh, to say to everyone, it's beautiful to speak with the spirit world, with those that have passed on from the other world, but don't neglect the spirits of this world as well. Why not have the whole spiritual realm, living and non-living, at our disposal? Why not be friends with all of it? Because we're a part of it. We have our foot in both worlds. Definitely. Yeah? Um, why not have it all? The, the spirits of this world can guide you on this life. Mm -hmm. And the spirits of the other world can guide the soul yes. on the other part of our life after life. Oh, so. thank you so much. The wonderful words to, to finish this time together on. And thank you, Maureen. And in Welcome. the comments down below, in the, in the description down below, we'll have the name of the, the, the link to the college and the Back to Basics mm -hmm. shamanism group. So if you would like to know more and, and you know, get involved, get in touch or just find out more, it's Absolutely. there for you. Yeah. So, it's a very, very exciting journey. Yeah, it is, isn't and, it? And one day we'll never, we'll never um, be, be sad on taking because, you know, it's just amazing to walk it and you understand it, to walk out in the forest yeah. or into a meadow and feel closer to God than anywhere else on earth. Wonderful. You can't, you can't, there's nothing that compares. So thank you so much, Maureen. You're welcome. Anytime, anything else you need, just give us a call. Thank you.